Welcome Netrunners to the Android Mainframe tutorial. Android Mainframe is actually kind of a different board game than what you might be used to. It's a game for two to four players where the main goal of the game is to create what's known as secure areas. So getting into the setup, there are six unique characters that you can pick from. Each character has a stack of access points and five unique cards to them. So every player will take the character and the access points and cards associated to them. Here I've already set up the board. This board here is made up of four different larger plastic pieces that you just simply put together and I've placed the partitions here off to the side. I'm going to show for here what's known as the generic program deck. And while I'm doing this, the players will decide who will go first. After determining who goes first, each player will take their five unique cards, shuffle them, and randomly give themselves three. The other two will not be used in this game. Now we'll prepare what's known as the program stack here, which is four cards from this generic program deck. Which will be face up for here, all the players can see. So whoever is the first player will take one of their access points and place it anywhere onto the board. You can see this board is made up of these square points for the access points to fit snugly right in and then the lines around them for the partitions to fit in. So each player will take one of their access point, place it wherever they'd like and you guys are ready to start the game. So when it's your turn, you have the option of performing one action from a handful of actions. You can either A, use one of your unique programs from your hand, B, use one of the generic programs here from the suite, or C, you can discard the top card of the programs deck to place another access point anywhere onto the board. So let's look at what different kind of generic programs you can do. This here is shift. You can take an access point and move it anywhere on the board. So the first player can say, all right, I'm gonna discard this card and I'm gonna move you into the corner. And that's an example of one action. And then of course, once you've used up an action from the generic program suite, you will replace it so that there is always four for the next player. So the other actions you can perform are actions that have a that have a design of partitions. So what you do is you take that many partitions and make that same design, but you can place it anywhere on the board. However, in the example of this here, you can see that the skew partition points to the left and the veer partition here points to the right. So it's just important to make sure that when you're placing these partitions, you do what's designated on your card and not the opposite mirrored version. However, the way you have it turned around is completely up to you. And it fits just like that. The next thing you have here is fetch. Take one partition and put it anywhere on the board. So this player can take one and place it anywhere, because why not? Then the next one up here is swap. Simply swap to access points. And lastly, the last generic program card that you will find, besides the one that I've mentioned, is replicate, which means take two partitions and place them wherever you'd like. When partitions make a closed area, this can be a secured area. A secured area is any partition that's closed, just like this, that has an access point in it. So in this example here, if we just made this shape, we can take this partition and flip it down. This is now a secured area and cannot be touched for the rest of the game. 
So if other players were to try and say, you know, move partitions around, they couldn't touch any partition that's involved in the making of a secure area, nor could they touch the access point. The reason why this is important because at the end of the game, the players will score based on how many secure zones they have and how big they are. So if this player say had the partition set up like this, this secured now, this secured zone is now worth two points. Also, let's say secure zone looked like this and the player had another access point in there. So when they finally closed it, this secured area only has one person's access points, so it can be secure, and both of them would flip. And at the end of the game, this player would score twice for each. So this would be one, two for this one, and then for this one, three, four. So this point is now worth four points to them because of their two access points. Now, if it was like this and a player had placed a partition so that now this zone is closed however it is not secure because there are two different access points in it in order for it to be a fully secured zone somebody would have to close the box so that now we have two separate zones you can't have two different access points in one zone it's not secured by that point It should also go to reason that, let's say if this was a secured zone on the map, another player could not simply put a token in there and also be secure. Like I said, once the zone is secured, it cannot be touched, messed with, or interfered with. So, the only rule that's really preventing you from doing anything that you want, when you're placing partitions, you cannot place a partition so that the zone that it would make would be empty. In this example here, let's just say that this player wants to do skew. So they'll take the design and they'd want to do so that the last piece goes here. They can't do that because this would then be an empty zone with no access point in it. And so that move would be illegal. They'd have to try something else and place the partitions somewhere else so that it doesn't make an empty zone. So what are these unique cards? Every player has five and when you play a game you can only take three of them. These will be unique programs that you can use apart from the generic suite that will have special abilities that are a little more complicated. So each player has unique cards that you'd simply have to read what the description is and follow through. But when you use one of these cards, these cards will go to a separate discard pile unique to you. So that each player will have their own discard pile and there will be a generic discard pile. So how does the game end? When the program suite here, as the players perform actions and fill out the board with all their special partitions once the last program is revealed in the deck. All right, let's say the green player here performs her action, places her partitions, great. And now the last card has been revealed. It is at this point that every player will have one turn left before the game officially ends. So player three, We'll get to do his thing, player one, we'll get to do one thing, and player three, we'll get to do the last. And at this point, the game would be over. You would then score up all your secured zones. That's why it's a good idea to use the unique programs from your hand so you're not taking away from the deck itself and ending the game that much quicker. Let me know what you guys think of this game. I'd be happy to do videos of this because it's so simple and it's a lot of fun to play with my brother. The two of us really get back and forth going between us. But anyway, thanks for watching.